May God bless you abundantly and stop everything that you are doing there right now. Look at us. Look at me now in this moment. It doesn't matter how bad your problem is, your situation. God is calling you now for something great that he wants to do in your life. That is, he wants to take this suffering away from you. He wants to take this pain away from you. He wants to take this shame away from you. Yes, my friend, that's right. You can overcome. It is possible for you to overcome. Let me tell you something. God, he is capable of doing what seems to be impossible to become possible. Perhaps you are already triggered by this quote that I just mentioned in the sense of how can God change a life of a person who is addicted for 20 years? How God can change a life of a person that has been taking medication for a specific situation, health condition, and break free from this health condition? How? Well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's why I'm going to show to you right now this powerful testimony of this person that was completely destroyed in addictions, family broken, everything torn apart. But the moment that they decided to use their faith to come to the shelter of the Most High, their life was completely transformed. And that's exactly what God wants to do in your life. Let us watch this testimony now. And after, I'm going to share with you here something very powerful from the Word of God. Because like I said, God is calling you to put an end to your suffering. I believe in this. Let us watch this testimony now. And we are going to come back. My story began December the 5th, 1969. Um, my mother gave birth to me, but I actually died and the doctors brought me back. So it was like I wasn't supposed to be born. By the age of two, I had seen so much violence in the house that a child shouldn't have experienced that. By the age of five, my father, he passed away. So I didn't know how to be loved by a father or how to be loved by a man. And by that being, losing my father, no man in the house, my mother, she, you know, brought men in. And these men, they were child molesters. They tried to, you know, molest me as a child. So it was like things I had to run from as a child. My little brother's father, um, I watched him literally just feed her drugs to keep her so high and out of it so he can take advantage of uh, me and my sisters. It, it really destroyed us as a family. I didn't get the chance to be raised with my sisters because we were split up because this man was like, you know, molesting us. And I remember my sister one night, he tried to touch me. And I remember my sister, putting herself in the place of me to keep him from touching me. And I had to be no more than about seven. At the age of 16, um, I started smoking marijuana. That lead, led me to like drop out of school. All I wanted to do was smoke, smoke marijuana. Um, I met my first father, baby's father, at the age of 17, and it started out beautiful. He was nice and kind. Um, later, he started being abusive, and every time I would try to leave, he would like, you know, beat me, give me black eyes. I remember one time I went out of town to get away and some kind of way he found me. And that's like a three hour drive and I was six months pregnant. And he just kept punching me repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. And all I can remember was just holding my stomach to keep him from like, you know, hitting me in my stomach to make me lose the baby. Um, when I finally did get away from him, he would be nice. And then it would start back over again. Um, before it led up to me killing him, three weeks prior to that, he had stabbed my mom in the back and he had almost like sliced my throat because my mother, like, we was fighting. Um, when that third week came around, I remember running away from him that day and all he kept doing was threatening me, like, oh, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill your mom, I'm gonna shoot her in the head. And 
The day when it happened, my son, he was laying on the couch and he went to reach from, for him. And all I remember was pulling the trigger and it was like, it was, I don't know, it's like everything went still. And when I did that, I turned to that life of crime. I turned to the life of selling drugs. I turned to all those things because I thought it was normal because that's what I was used to. It wasn't a day that I didn't have some liquor. It wasn't a day that I didn't have some drugs. It wasn't a day that I didn't smoke marijuana. So it was like I was trying to fill this void with all those substances and it wasn't doing anything for me. And I can remember back in 2000, I tried to kill myself. There's a drug that's out on the market called ecstasy. And I took it and it's like, I remember I can hear people in the background saying, just give her milk, give her milk, give her milk. And it was like I was dying. They was trying to help me to come back. And the way the drugs had made me feel that I was not myself. I wasn't me. It was like I was another person. So it's like I wanted to kill myself slowly without actually committing suicide. It seemed like even after that, because there was a curse in our family, I still continue to date men that were like that. I married a pastor thinking that, oh, this is gonna be it. I don't have to worry about a man cheating, fighting, being abusive. I thought that this was gonna be the one, um, not knowing that he was really not ordained by God to be a pastor. It was just a persona he was putting on. Saturday nights, he would be in the club, doing drugs, drinking. Sunday morning, he's in the church house on the pulpit. After me and him separated, I found myself going back to those same type of men before because it was like, it, this is all I deserve. This is all I, uh, this is what God has for me. It's these type of men, and this is what my life is supposed to be about. That's what I thought. And I remember I had met my husband that is now, and I remember telling him, I need to get back close to God. I need to find a church. But I was afraid because it was like, I don't want to go in the church judging the pastor because I was married to a pastor. Um, I didn't want to go in the church not thinking God wasn't there because I thought God had forgot about me. So it's like, I knew I needed to find God, but I didn't know where. I remember I had got a knock on the door and normally I don't open the door. And that day I opened the door and it was like, I was invited to go to a church and I was like, oh, I don't have a car. You know, I was making up all these excuses because I was like really fed up with church. I was like, I didn't want to go to church anymore. I was disgusted, but I knew I needed to find the church. So I remember the pastor telling me about the Universal Church and they'll come and pick me up and take me to church. So I was like, you know, what can be the worst thing? Let me go find out, let me try. You know, I don't know. So I remember they came and picked me up on a Sunday. And when I stepped foot in the church, I was like, so, okay, this is different. I said, but you know, I feel God in this place. So upon being at the church, it's like, they taught me how to put my faith and trust back in God, how to receive God, how to open up and pour out my heart to God. I can say that I thank God for sending his shepherds to knock on my door because at that time, I had, I was losing everything, even my mind. And I, I tell anybody, if you get a knock on your door or a phone call from anyone from the Universal Church, your life will be changed. You would love yourself. You would. You would start back trusting God. You would know that God is real. I can truly say that my life is better now that I believe and I trust that God is here with me and He's guiding me. I know I'm crying, but these are tears of joy because I've never had anyone to just show me that God is real. I've heard about God, but I didn't have no one to tell me or show me that He was real. Today, I'm married. I'm happy. My family is good. Um, I'm working on my degrees, something I should have been had a long time ago. 
Um, I have a business, me and my husband, we started together. I love myself. I don't have any grudges uh, against anybody in the past that have hurt me. Um, I love life. Uh, I enjoy life. I enjoy, I just enjoy. After I learned how to forgive those that hurt me and I learned how to forgive myself, I was able to seek the Holy Spirit. And by me seeking the Holy Spirit and receiving the Holy Spirit, it has got me to a place where I'm peaceful. Um, I'm no longer angry because I have the Holy Spirit. And that was the best thing that ever happened to me by receiving the Holy Spirit. Free of all bitterness, all anger, all depression. Um, the Holy Spirit just allowed me to be free, free from curses. Um, they've been broken. Um, it's the best guidance in the world. What a powerful story. What a powerful story, my friend. You see, when we use the power of a faith, what seems to be impossible becomes possible. You see, the life all broken, the family all broken, but the moment that they came to God, God transformed their life. And that's exactly what's going to happen with you. You know that here, the doors of our church, they are open every single day. That's right. We are not here today to tell you stories of the Bible. We are here to tell you that the same God that worked wonders in the past, He works wonders now in your life if you believe, if you decide to take a step forward. Of course, all that you need to do, it is to stand up, to get up, and to take an action. That is, you can come to the church, can participate in the services, you can come and, you know, talk to God and go to Him because the author is here and in the same way that He heard the others, is going to listen to you. Is it true or not? Look what the Word of God says here in the Psalm 91. It is written like this. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then it says, I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Let me ask you a question. Can you say that? Can you say that He is your refuge? He is your fortress? Can you say that He is the one that you are putting your trust in? Perhaps you may have recurred or go to all the others, other options that you had in life, specialists, uh, counselors, places that apparently they promoted or they promised, if that's not the case, that something would change in your life, but they never happen. But what about when it comes to God? Well, I'm saying this so that you can reason with me. Because when we speak about faith, it is all about a decision. That's it. You don't have to feel faith. You don't have to see faith. You don't have to touch faith. You just need to make a mind, change the mindset that you have and say, in this case, if this applies to you, that's it. I'm going to have to give it a go. If what it's written here, it is true. I want this for me as well. Then it is with whom, with you, whom I'm talking. And that's why this Sunday we are having this special meeting, this special prayer, cry out for those who want to be in the shelter of the Most High. For those who want to be, to receive the divine protection that comes only from God. You see right now what is, is happening all over the road, destruction, calamity. Well, we don't need to go too far. Look right now how the situation of your life is. 
But when you make a decision to put yourself under the shelter of the Most High, indeed, you are protected. And then you can say this too. So my friend, don't wait. Don't take more time. Don't take more time. You can put an end to that situation. You can put an end to this problem that you have. That's why this Sunday, we are going to be here all together in the church, in our church in Liverpool. Likewise, all the other branches we have. And you who say, I want to see this happening in my life. I want to be protected. I want my family to be protected from all negativity. We are going to come. And on this day when you come, we are going to be praying and determining everybody to be in the shelter of the Most High. And on the day, we are also uh, have this special day where we're going to give this blessed handkerchief for you to be able to use, for you to be able to use for your family, for your, um, for you, for yourself as in. We're going to teach you how can these words who are here from, who are here in this Psalm 91, they can be a reality in your life, in everything that you do. So you who say, Pastor, this is what I need. I need a change of life. So Sunday, 10, Sunday 9.30 in the morning in the Northumberland Street, 153 Northumberland Street in Liverpool. You're going to leave your house. You're going to prepare yourself. You're going to leave your house and you're going to come to this place. And I challenge you. I challenge you. I challenge all of you. Because I really doubt that your life will remain the same. I really doubt. And then to complement... Look what it says here in the, the, the still the Psalm 91. It says this part like this. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Right now, perhaps what you have seen coming to your dwelling is sickness addictions, depression, division. But here the word of God is promising that no evil will come, nor plague will come near to your dwelling. Isn't that great, my friend? Isn't that awesome? You see that perhaps people, they don't have the courage to tell to you, to guarantee to you that you can be able to break free from this. Not even the best specialist that exists or counselor. But the word of God give to us this confidence. Give to, give to us this assurance. All that you have to do, it is to make a decision to accept that, to want to have that, and that's why you will come to God. So you who like to reserve your handkerchief, you can already even call to us right now, 0296029837. You want to talk to us, you want a prayer, you want counseling, you want to speak out, you can give us a call to us. Or you can come even to the church. Our churches are open every single day and we are located at the 153 North Milan Street in Liverpool, opposite the, the Liverpool Plaza Shopping Center, very close to the Westfield. Or if you live in our, in the region of Blacktown, or even in Chatswood, that area, you can attend our church that it is there ready, open and ready to receive all of you. In case you are in interstate, we have our branches like you have there, the display showing the address. In Queensland, likewise, we have in Melbourne. Okay, so we are going to now prepare ourselves for the prayer. But nevertheless, here it says, No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Do you want this protection? Do you need this protection? Do you long for this protection? Then, my friend, here this word can give to you this protection. The word of God can give to you everything that you need. So let us get ready for this Sunday because it will be a meeting of power 
we are, you're going to receive graciously a handkerchief like this. And you have here printed the Psalm 91. And this Psalm, by faith, it will be a reality in your life if you decide to do what God is going to tell you. He wants you to do. Amen. Let's prepare ourselves for the prayer in this very moment. When we pray to God, we can receive strength, courage, faith, peace and anything we sincerely ask for. Take advantage of this moment, close your eyes, and raise your thoughts to God. It's time to pray. My God and Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray right now and I ask you that you visit this man, this woman, this youth, every single person that it is joining us in prayer. They are praying together with us. So manifest your power right now to bless them, to answer them to change, my God, their situation. Whatever it is that this person is suffering, it is struggling with it. Let your power now be manifested and let, my God, your healing and deliverance reach to them, wherever they are now at home, at work, in the hospital, wherever they are, let your spirit now touch on them and let right now all negativity, all curse, all evil spirit, all spirits of darkness from their lives and bodies in Jesus' name to get away now in this moment. And my God, we submit, we give to you, we surrender to you our entire lives. And we are certain, oh God, that you are listening and that you are already providing the answer. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in your hands we surrender all. And if you agree, say, I believe. Amen. Look at me, my friend. You are blessed. Once again, this Sunday, this Sunday, pay attention. This Sunday, 9.30 in the morning. You who want to be protected. You who want to learn how to live under the protection of the Most High. You will be here with your family. And you can be certain that your life will be transformed. Because again, this word, it doesn't fail. You just need to make a decision to leave the place that you are. And you come here to the church, to the environment of faith, the environment suitable for you to be. And God is going to do the rest. Okay? 9.30 in the morning this Sunday, we are at 153 Northumberland Street in Liverpool. And again, if you wish to call us, more information, or you want to talk to one of us, you can dial 0296-029837. Okay? May God bless you abundantly and look forward because God is with you. Until next time, bye-bye.